Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I feel special. <laughs> Hi, Devani. It's finally nice to meet you after, I don't know how many years we've known each other, but. A long time. Yeah. Years and years. Yeah. But I would like to thank you for joining me today. And I would also like to thank Lori Twitchell from Beyond the Buzz Marketing for setting this up. She actually yeah. reached out to me and asked if I would like to see the movie and potentially do the interview with you. So I'm I'm grateful for her for setting this up. So we She's been really great. Yeah, super fun to work with and, uh, and also an advocate of the movie. So I'm very grateful to have her on the team. And very happy to be speaking to you after all this time. Thank you. As I mentioned uh, before we started, um, I got to see the movie last night and it's it's kind of unsettling. Um, at first, not sure what's happening because you're just kind of taking everything from his perspective. He's yeah. Mr. Um, greasy fingers or whatever you you know five fingers in that little yeah. in that little shopping center there and um just to kind of help hide his identity um i i thought that was interesting um so um early in in his career his career <laughs> he uh he was uh, just stealing from people. So he had yes. a, a problem with, with theft. And so um, he progressed then to Peeping Tom and then ultimately to um, engaging and acting out the fantasies that he, he used to do. So at this point, um, he had esca escaped from prison and yeah. was uh, looking to mask his identity. And uh, he had moved into an apartment on campus and uh was following around um a couple of girls and uh stealing from people to get food get alcohol and then um ultimately act out his uh his fantasies aggressive and sick fantasies of bludgeoning women to death and yes you know and of course we're speaking of ted bundy you know yes and and the movie takes place in your your version of the movie takes place in 1978 i was 12 when that in 1978 so that shows you my age <laughs> i can't really do you, relate do you remember it. anything from the attacks you were young i was i was too young i didn't really pay attention to the news you know we didn't really okay. have much tv we didn't have access to tv back then uh, like kids do today you can access anything anywhere anything at any yeah. time yeah do you so interesting topic for that actually and i haven't really discussed that yet do you think children are better off now or then do you think they're desensitized now or do you think that they're better informed i think it's a it's a catch twenty. it's a double-edged sword i think there's because there's more access there's um they have more um yeah they have more information more information at their fingertips but then again where that information is coming from has to be kind of monitored as well yeah um information from youtube or tiktok is not really information really <laughs> yeah I watched a movie yeah. the other night and it was a revenge movie and the guy watched a couple of videos on how to use a knife in a fight and he thought he was a knife expert. Like, you know, and that's the kind of world we live in now. Like everybody thinks they're an expert because they saw something online. Absolutely. You know. A hundred percent. So yeah, I, I I think we were we were kind of better off not having all that access back in our day. I think, you know, I think there's a little bit of a lost innocence now. Yeah. I think it's kind of harder to to just be a kid because there is so much access to information that exactly, you know, it's it's good and bad. I completely yeah. agree with you. Yeah. But so at that you... point, you got to skip over Ted Bundy, so that was good and um and get well, lots of really, information on the case on now the as an adult. Yeah. Um 
in regards to his peeping Tom days, when he was doing a bit of peeping near the start and he was watching the young woman converging with her neighbor when she was walking her dog. And yes. then he, another scene where he's outside of the building, but the young woman is watching him from the building. Yes. It was an interesting observation point because it was like he knew he couldn't go any further that's why he was all of a sudden like no i just remembered i got this important phone call because he knew he'd been seen so he can't really act do on what it. he came to do absolutely you're actually one of the first people to bring uh to bring her up so uh, alex freeham is the actress who plays the girl in the window um it is absolutely inspired by the real girl um there's oh, an okay. infamous infamous photo of her looking through uh, the upstairs window that was uh, the image that was used on all the press and the newspapers when they were announcing this crime. So that is a recreation of that moment. And she, the girl from the window, uh, she felt uneasy all day that day. Um, she couldn't shake what the feeling was. She didn't know what the issue was, but she was so distraught that there was something wrong or something going to be wrong that she actually left the sorority house that night and went to go stay with a friend and she missed Ted Bundy coming into her house by just minutes. Yeah, because you you actually referenced that near before that incident at yes. three o'clock in the morning where she yes. says her to her 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 um her sisters her sorority sisters that she's uneasy and she's not sure what it is and they're yes. kind of like what do you mean like they just thought she was being silly and 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 it was such a such a, a random throwaway thing and it was not very it was mentioned just a tiny bit in the press but it really got um overlooked by by everything else going on with the case but there was a lot of little details like that that I thought were just fascinating that hadn't been portrayed before um in any depictions of this yeah. this story so um so yeah there's a lot of a lot of testimony from from the girls themselves um after the fact the ones that survived the night um lots of details about what happened at the bar earlier that day lots of things that are not um not portrayed or not available in any other depictions of this story that uh, we got to focus on here, which I really thought was awesome. Yeah, and you really, you really focused because other movies that I've seen that are focused around Ted Bundy is just essentially Ted Bundy. Like it's just him doing his crimes, yep. so on and so forth. We get to know the women, the the victims, you know, yes. we get to know yes. them a bit more, you know, and, and, and you're responsible for that because you wrote the story. You didn't do the, yeah. um, you didn't do the screenplay, but you did the story. You're yes. also one of the actors. You're also a producer, one of the producers, and you also yes. directed. So yes. you're wearing a few hats. How did it's, you? It's my baby. I, yeah. I was so passionate um, about the story. I've wanted to tell it for a long time. Um, I made a Charles Manson movie years ago um, oh. that kind of took a different approach and it was well-received. And so I saw the power that um, came with being able to tell these true crime stories. And I really felt um, passionate about this particular case and the women involved in it because the case has been heavily depicted in the media. It's, there's been a million movies, tons of documentaries, you know, yeah. it's the same information and told the same way over and over and over again. And right. yet there was so much more to this case and the story that was never showcased, that was never talked about. And this particular day in general, the entire movie is a factual occurrence of what happened that day. Everything that you see depicted in, in the film is pulled from witness testimony. It's pulled from the crime cases. So oh. it is literally like you are living that day with these people. Everything is accurate. And so there was so much that happened in this 24 hour period. And when I would tour around doing horror conventions or whatever, um, I would see people idolizing Bundy. They were wearing 
you know, t-shirts with him. They had coffee mugs and stickers. Mm -hmm. And some people even had tattoos of him. And he was like a cool factor, like a pop culture icon. But I had studied the case so extensively and knew the level and the magnitude of his crimes and what a fucking monster he was. And so I said, you know, that level is not portrayed in any of these stories because it's too dark and too uncomfortable for mainstream audiences. So they just gloss over it and focus on like, he was attractive and a student and, you know, no, that's not who he was. He was one of the most twisted, dark, sinister, violent, disgusting, repugnant monsters in American history. And we needed to make that his legacy, not that he was hot or Zac Efron like, you know what I mean? So there was that. And then I had a problem with the fact that Everyone in the world knew his name, but no one could name one of the almost 100 victims. Not one. Yeah. Yeah. And they're the ones whose lives were impacted or ended, and they get to be an afterthought in their own attack and murders. It was just so gross to me. I was like, we need to do something about it. And the general public, you know, they were fed the information this way. So it didn't even occur to them to think about these people as people. They were- caricatures in the story they weren't humanized so that was my intention with this movie well and i think i think you did a good job like it it's still fresh in my head from last night and i was bothered with the fact that he was peeping around the building for so long and nobody saw him like nobody yep. nobody was like hey buddy what are you doing you know like nope Because uh, this is the case that coined the term serial killer. It literally was from studying this case. Um, FBI profiling came from interviewing Ted after he was arrested. It wasn't a thing. We didn't know people like this existed yet. We didn't know to lock our doors. We didn't know to check our back seat. We didn't know to look around the house and make sure nobody was coming in the back door. It didn't exist yet. Um, So... It just shows the level of horror that these people encountered because they had zero perception of what was coming for them because in society, it didn't exist yet. From the events that happened this night, Ted is linked to all of the crimes that he commits. And that is what FBI profilers study and interview and and spend time with him learning about the psychology and the mindset of of who and what he was and they learned that people like this exist from the interviews based on these crimes so from there we were able to um put together uh antisocial personality um narcissism uh violent at sexual fetish and and all of these levels of psychology and evil came about and became mainstream information based on this case. There's a lot of good that came from it, but up until this day, completely, completely ignorant to the fact that anyone was even out there like that. So it just shows how much these women, when they were attacked, what they went through, because it was literally zero understanding of what was coming for them. And that's kind of um, the approach I took to the movie too. You know, the the poster and kind of the marketing around it, we didn't talk about Ted Bundy until after it no. came out now. Um, the poster kind of comes off like a generic slasher. So when- That's what now I that thought I was in, that's what I thought I was in store. I'm like, oh, it's a sorority. Yeah. It's a- it's Sorority, a hot a girl, it's a sorority. Yes, yeah, it's, but it's, it's intentionally like designed to be that way. And the reason why is because you are spending the day as the viewer going along for this ride and you needed to experience innocent, happy, fun, go about your day and then be blindsided by what you're actually in store for because that's what these people went through. So it's designed to kind of fake you out and desensitize you. So you'll go on that ride as the viewer. I want to applaud you for a few things. Um, the direction, how you how you um, do a lot of the shots of him from the side, or you only see a partial part of his face in the mirror, like when he's driving, you only see his his brow. You know, 
you only see his jawline when he's chewing or something, you know, um, you don't give a whole full representation. Um, I found it interesting at the very start when he's shaving and you hear the voice. Was that his voice in his head? And also the mirror was blurry. Like you yeah. had it, it wasn't fogged over. It was just blurry. Yes. Was that to just mask the identity of who he was? Because this could really be anybody. Uh, great question. So the intention behind that. So there's a lot of things with this movie that are just very surface level and you can kind of just watch it and enjoy it as like a slasher movie. Yeah. But there's a lot of themes uh, that have a lot of deeper level on it. So the opening scene with that, those are uh, hits his inner monologue and what he um, describes as the entity. So when oh, okay. he talks to police after the crimes about what happened and when he starts talking about his psychology, he would explain to them the best way he could when he would start to have these intrusive thoughts about wanting to follow and stalk and then attack and kill girls. Um, he referred to that thought process as the entity that takes over him. So... Those words in the opening are him trying to put the entity at bay, trying to keep it down. So when he started on this day, he didn't intend to commit the murders that he did. He was um, fresh out of jail and he was frenzied and he was really focused on just acting out his sexual aggression because it had been building up for so long and he hadn't had any victims. But he didn't want to be that way. He just, he wouldn't want to go and attack these women, but he would end up just doing it anyway. He couldn't control it. So those first few lines in the beginning of the movie are actually quotes from him in prison testifying about the entity to police. And so we hear that as an inner monologue. The blurriness is him checking out from his present self and being present with the entity. Ultimately, He's able to subdue it and he goes about his day trying to blend in as a regular person. Over right. the course of the day, it doesn't go well. He gets rejected by the girls that he's trying to pursue over and over and over again. The entity builds and builds and builds until ultimately in the bar scene, you see him embrace his, his reflection yeah. and then ultimately give in to the entity and the entity who's, who is who comes out of the bathroom and then goes on that murder spree. Ah, which is the black mass. Yes. Hmm. Now, the other thing I want to applaud you for is not making the killings look... A lot of slasher movies or horror movies or crime movies, they sometimes make the killings look almost sensational. Yes. These were brutal. These were brutal... I mean, he's yeah. hitting them with a, a log. Yes. Um, can Is it possible that that was one of the more tactful rape scenes I've ever seen on film? I know, it's horrible. So I've had to it's talk a, about this a, a lot. It's, to, it's a horrible thing to su suggest or imagine. No, but I, I understand. Yeah, I understand because exactly you're what you're trying seen, to say. I've only seen it from the victim's point of view, and it yes. makes it so much more impactful for the viewer because yes. we're not seeing him act because we know what he's doing. It's clear what he's doing. Yes. You can tell by the motion in which she's going. Is because most of those scenes I personally fast forward, I don't find those entertaining. It's hard to watch. Yeah, very hard to watch. That's somebody's, yeah, somebody's being violated, and they, you know, but that was one I was just like, wow, it was just like that hit home. Like, that just that was that was a hard that was tough, but kudos to you and kudos to the actress who was able to pull that off. My actors are phenomenal. Um, we had several meetings and went through forwards to backwards about what was going to happen in those scenes and um several of my performers even ones that weren't involved in that scene before they signed on to the movie they wanted to know how it was going to be handled because mm -hmm. it's very easy for that to end up in exploitation elements right yeah. um but it was important to me 
I think the most disturbing things about what happened that night are was this this young girl she was a baby she was you know a young girl she was close with her family you know she had hopes and dreams and it's it's one thing to know like yeah he attacked and killed a lot of girls it's just very throwaway you can put that wall up and disconnect from it but when you have to look somebody in the eyes while it's happening it's a whole nother level of horror it's a whole nother level of impact as a viewer and i thought it was so important to do because we are taking back the legacy of ted bundy and we are putting it on the attention on the victims as it always should have been and so when you're going to take away someone's celebrity like that what they think they know about a story or a person you need to come correct on that you need to really really showcase the incredible horror bravery strength and resilience of these young girls in what they went through because that is what you're going to take with you and that's when you see the ted bundy fan club what's going to take you from like oh interesting to the ick factor and so both of my actors really understood the responsibility of that and this these people's last moments um and they really really approached it with care and concern and respect and were very committed to making sure the scene worked the way it needed to so that it did impact the viewer and so it did make sense yeah we don't really get a full knowledge that this is in fact about ted bundy until after the crimes and nope. then they're like showing this to one of the victims as she's being wheeled out of the house is this the man who attacked you and it's like yes. they couldn't see him he was a black mass it's the black mass yeah just... and that's actually what um so the character that comes out that i actually played is uh kelly king she she testified to uh the police and and the press when they asked what she saw, did they see the face? And she said, no, all I saw was a black mass. So black mass was the big headline on the the newspapers the following morning. That's what they referred to him as for a long time until he was caught. Well, and you, you wrap it up nicely because you actually show archival footage of yes. Ted in his slick suit. And I think he represented him in court, didn't he? He represented himself. He rep so yeah he he had a couple of lawyers and they just couldn't yeah. deal with him because he was too crazy and then yeah. he did represent himself um, and ultimately was convicted. He um he why. <laughs> yeah I, well he had a good case for himself at first but ultimately um, the bite marks left yeah. from that night and from that particular attack um, were traced back to his bite marks and that's what ended up losing it for him and um in addition to he cross-examined uh some of the witnesses and the detectives in the case and gave himself away in the fact that he was asking such intimate details about the violence and the graphic murder and he seemed to be excited and enjoying it and so that tipped off people that there was something not right here because anyone else who wasn't a psychopath was horrified by the material, but he wasn't. Yeah, and you you um you wrap it up nicely by by attributing it to the to the victims and but they don't there's they some don't great things that came out of the case and no one really talks about it you know so yeah. the the girls that night um several of them volunteered uh to advocate for uh victims and witnesses of crimes and and advocate for how police um interrogated them so the they changed the way um the way police interact with people on crime scenes before they were just super aggressive and like going after the information they needed it didn't occur to them to also humanize victims that these people are people who just went through something truly horrific and were traumatized so that was the first time that came about and that conversation happened and so they were able to change that um they you know the girl who who played the law student um, in this film, grew up to be a very prolific member of the government. She helped pass um, victim advocacy uh, laws in Congress because of her involvement in, in this night and, and 
these murders. So she, you know, she came across and then pa- was able to not only present, but pass the legislation there. So there's a lot of wonderful things that happened because of these, these women and, um, and in spite of the attacks. And so, again, I think more focus needs to be on that and less on, um, you know, Ted was good looking. Cheers. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Monster. So, well, I'm ho- I think we're hoping that um, if you've watched it, you know, it kind of changes your perspective a little bit on the case, on the people involved. And ultimately, the goal with it is like anytime you see, you know, a shooting on the news or a murder or something happening, your immediate thought isn't like, oh, who's the guy who did it? It's maybe you think about, oh, who was impacted, whose lives just changed forever. It's just it's the very, very it's a seed of hope, hopefully changing society's perception on on criminals and the crimes that they commit. Well, we've sensationalized criminals for centuries. Forever, yes. Slashers, I mean, we got Freddie, we got Jason, we got Michael, we got Chucky, you know, now we've got Art the Clown, you know, they're all, mm-hmm. it's all, you know, it's great entertainment, but when it gets to the point of them becoming celebrity, it, I don't know. I, th- I think, you know, I think there's a a human curiosity in the darkness. You know, I think it's okay to enjoy slasher movies. You know, I, I'm the first one to to act in them, to watch them, to buy them. I'm a huge horror fan. And I think so there much. is a place so for that. Much. Yeah. There's a it's this is not to say that you shouldn't enjoy certain elements. We we need it. It's cathartic, right? Yeah. But I think there's a healthy way to do it. And I think there's an unhealthy way to do it. And I don't think we've been having those conversations. I think when we need to understand the the line between when we're watching, you know, Jason go to town there. And then when we're watching Ted Bundy rape and kill children at Florida state, you know what I mean? There, there needs to be that super, super important line drawn. And we need to know the difference between entertainment value and responsibility in society as a member of it. And, and those conversations just weren't happening yet, but I'm hoping that we can start to now. Well, I, I think you all did a great job. I think it's, um, I think it's an impactful movie. It would certainly impacted me, and I watch a lot of movies every year. So. I've, I've heard that a lot of like the diehard like I love the worst of it horror fans kind of came out of this, and we're like, it leaves something there, you know, because and that's the whole point is you know it's supposed to touch you on a we're all human, and yeah. I think it taps into a little bit of humanity in all of us, and hopefully puts it back on on these people as well. So I think if it it would say something if it didn't impact you, you know, with this kind of material. I will say one thing about um, Mark Harmon, who was in St. Elsewhere from 1986 to 1988. He was a heartthrob back then. And he played Ted Bundy in The Deliberate Stranger, the two-night event on TV. Yes, I saw it. I thought that was quite brave of him because he was such a heartthrob and and everything for him to take that role it was kind of I thought it was kind of risky for him but absolutely it was very risky because it it was not a nice portrayal I mean it 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 shouldn't be it's about Ted Bundy but right no it's um well I thought the movie was done quite well it's so I absolutely enjoyed that one as well I thought it was a really really good portrayal of it um and I love that you brought that up no one's brought that up yet um so what's interesting is a lot of mainstream actors uh feel not or or are not allowed by their reps to take on uh some of these characters I know for years uh Zach wanted to make that movie and then I know um Leonardo DiCaprio wanted to play H.H. Holmes there's a lot of mainstream actors who find such interesting opportunities to portray such complex characters um in some of these and ultimately it's bad for their image so they're not allowed to do it they're not it doesn't get greenlit and right. so they 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 can't but i think that's so interesting that um there's such a market for it and you know we see with true crime is so prevalent today yeah. right it's like on everything and it's the top <laughs> numbers on stuff so uh, people are curious and they do want it and yet 
it's acceptable for us, but it's not acceptable for people who make the business a lot of money. So right. I think that that's, that's a taboo that needs to to stop. Um, I do want to commend Zac Efron for taking on the role. But on the flip side, the people protecting that story needed to make it about somebody else. They needed to yeah. make it about Liz, his, his, his girlfriend at the time. And we needed to just have hearsay about his murders because yeah. watching Zac Efron horrifically rape and kill girls is not good for his image. You know what I mean? So we can't get it. So that's when it becomes um, a responsibility. I just talked about this in a different interview. The responsibility of if you're going to take on this kind of material as a filmmaker, you owe it to the people who went through this shit to do it right, to tell it accurately, to not water it down, to make Zac Efron look good. You know what I mean? You can't. This is nothing about the these crimes that is watered down or for a PG-13 audience. There's nothing about it. And if you do, then you are you are putting out misinformation into society that he was a pop ultra culture icon instead of the disgusting, despicable, horrific monster that he was. And you don't tell that story if you're going to put a PG rating on it, period. Exactly. Period. <laughs> Right there. Right, right there. between the eyes. Straight between very, the... I'm very passionate about that. Absolutely I, not. I can I can tell, and that's and that's great. And this has been wonderful. I've got a countdown clock of just under two minutes here. So is there anything else oh. you wanna have you have you got anything else you you've got in the future? Have you got something you've got coming up maybe that you wanna discuss briefly? I have I have a couple of new movies coming out. So um, totally polar opposite. If you didn't like this or if this was way too heavy for you, I also have a movie out called Camp Pleasant Lake, um, which <laughs> is just a straight slasher, total like turn off your brain, get some popcorn and just like enjoy yourself, um, which that's out now too. And um, uh, I have a movie coming out called Speed Train, which is uh, like a sci-fi action movie. Uh, oh, with some okay. horror staples. Yeah, uh, Nikki Whalen, who actually voices Liz in this, and then Scout Taylor Compton, um, who's from Halloween, um, uh, horror chick starring in that. So I, I have that coming out uh, later this year, as well as a few other things, too. Um, oh. I'm on social media, and I love chatting all things spooky. This guy knows that. Uh, so you can absolutely get in touch and stay in touch. I'd love to chat this movie, other movies, anything you have questions going on. Um, and I am looking to to do some more directing and, and make some more genre movies, hopefully later in the year. Um, so if you enjoy it, please be vocal about it. Um, this movie is tiny. We little budget. We shot it in five days. So all of it's, um, yeah, right. Not recommended. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, but if you, you know, if you found something of value of it, please do talk about it. A hundred percent of the momentum in this movie has been um, people finding something interesting about it and talking to other people about it. It is having an impact, like a massive one. Um, we just went to 